An emergency plan launched in Maricopa County after a spike in COVID related deaths, plus dry and hot with no rain in sight. Fire danger is high right now, plus Governor Ducey getting high praise in our nation's capital. 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials, and we are live statewide. So a big shout out to all of our viewers. We're on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, Facebook and YouTube. Hey guys, it's Tram here. We're going to start right now with some breaking news concerning the NRA. New York's Attorney General is suing the National Rifle Association, seeking to put the powerful gun advocacy organization out of business. This is over allegations that NRA execs diverted millions of dollars for personal benefit. The lawsuit filed Thursday by Attorney General Letitia James followed an 18 month investigation into the NRA, which is a nonprofit group originally chartered in New York. She accused its top leaders of using NRA funds for lavish personal trips, contracts for associates, and other questionable expenditures. Well, wearing face masks and social distancing seems to be working when it comes to fighting the surge of coronavirus cases here in Arizona. Today, the Department of Health Services is reporting more than 1,400 new cases bringing the total to more than 183,000 cases since the start of the pandemic. However, there are 70 new deaths, which brings our statewide total to more than 4,000 for the first time. As we just mentioned, when it comes to COVID-19, the numbers are trending down. That includes with ventilators, ICU patients and inpatients, but we are still seeing a high number of deaths. In fact, right now, almost two dozen bodies are in rented coolers in a county garage. It's because because the medical examiner was forced to activate an emergency plan after a spike in COVID related deaths. Team 12's Bram Resnick explains why the coolers are being used for the very first time. You'll recall the county leased these coolers three weeks ago, figuring this day might come. Now with COVID deaths climbing and funeral homes backed up, the coolers are being put to use. This isn't their final resting place. They're awaiting pickup from the uh, funeral home system. 22 bodies awaiting burial or cremation transferred to these leased coolers in a county garage. It came after the Maricopa County Medical Examiner's Office activated an emergency plan. 14 coolers had been rented last month, knowing this day might come. As for what's actually going on in the overall funeral home system, uh, we still don't have an exact answer for that. A spike in Arizona COVID deaths is a significant cause of a backup at Valley Funeral Homes. Over the last five months, the pace of new reports of coronavirus deaths has quickened. 80 days from the first death to the first 1,000 reported deaths. 34 days to 2,000, just 14 more days to 3,000, and 13 days to the brink of 4,000. Judith Stapley, executive director of the Arizona Board of Funeral Directors and Embalmers, told 12 News there is a spike in deaths for sure. Funeral homes are working their tails off to serve Arizona consumers. We did see a significant increase in the number of deaths in June and July. And we know that many of those are due directly to COVID-19. Hospitals are also concerned about a COVID spillover effect. Patients with other illnesses staying away and getting sicker and dying. It does concern us that people are delaying, you know, seeking services for things such as their heart attacks or their st or, or stroke-like symptoms. In Phoenix, Bram Resnick, 12 News. Bram, thank you. For months, our state was considered a COVID-19 hotspot, if you'll remember, but now the White House says Arizona is a leader when it comes to containing the virus. Governor Ducey getting high praise from President Trump on our state's pandemic response. Team 12's Trisha Hendricks is at the state capitol with that story. President Trump applauding Governor Doug Ducey for getting a handle on how things were going after we saw that big spike in cases when everything first reopened. The president's response sounds a lot different than what we've been hearing over the past month from state leaders when it comes to gradual improvements rather than victory over the virus. And while the pandemic may not be over yet, the praise from the president and Dr. Deborah Burks, this is definitely one that's hope for Arizonans. We're very proud of the governor and we are very proud of Arizona because in addition, the people had to help you. 
and they did. There's a real path forward and a common sense approach that we can apply in Arizona, not only around saving lives, but also safely and successfully getting our kids back to school at the appropriate time. U.S. Coronavirus Task Force Coordinator Dr. Deborah Burks was also at that meeting, and she said that Ducey did a great job putting the pieces together and really creating that path forward. That's what we all want to see, right? Dr. Burks praised Arizona, saying we were the first state to implement a way to stay open while still getting cases to come down. All right, Tricia, thank you. Families and educators across the state are waiting anxiously for state guidelines to lay out when classrooms can reopen. While we're waiting to hear from the state, Maricopa County health officials are laying out their own return to school benchmarks. Team 12's Jen Wall has the details. The answer from Maricopa County health officials is clear. They're saying Arizona schools are not ready to return in person just yet. This as many classrooms returned online this week, leaving parents, educators and students wondering when it will be deemed safe to return in person. We're not ready to fully go back to in person classes until we meet the benchmarks that we identify. We are not currently meeting those benchmarks to have our schools fully reopen and go back to in person teacher led classes. County health officials are now the latest group saying schools will not be ready for in person learning in the upcoming weeks as many had hoped. The county adding we need to hit benchmarks they set. The recommendations include wanting to see the number of total cases go down. And County Medical Director for Disease Control, Dr. Rebecca Sunshine, says there needs to be a decrease in the percent of positive tests. She says we have improved from 21% a month ago to 13% as of July 19th, but Dr. Sunshine adds they want to see that percentage drop below 5% and stay there for two weeks before in-person classes resume. And the state is expected to release their school guidelines by tomorrow. Stay with 12 News for updates. For now, we're in Phoenix. Jen Wall, 12 News. Jen, thank you. A lot of us get our news online, and sometimes that information can be flat out wrong. But we're here to verify. There's a meme out there comparing President Trump to former President Obama. We're breaking down the facts on that post. Take a look at this meme. It's spreading all over social media. It shows President Obama and President Trump side by side, comparing the two and the pandemics they faced in office, and then insinuates President Obama gave a $3.7 million grant to Wuhan labs. Let's break it all down. Obama faced H1N1. Trump is facing COVID-19. The meme points out there were nearly 15 times as many cases of H1N1 than there are COVID in the United States. But is it true? Our sources are the CDC and Johns Hopkins University. Per CDC estimates, the U.S. saw 60.8 million H1N1 cases in a year from April 2009 to April 2010. Eight months into this pandemic, Johns Hopkins University reports there are currently 4.7 million COVID-19 cases in the U.S. So we can verify the case totals in this meme are true, but it's missing important context. Per the CDC, H1N1 killed 12,469 Americans in one year. COVID-19 has already killed more than 155,000 in only eight months. Finally, let's answer this question. Which president gave a $3.7 million grant to Wuhan Labs? Our source this time is NIH. Project information on their site confirms NIH did award millions of dollars to EcoHealth Alliance, a nonprofit that researched coronaviruses across the globe, including in Wuhan, from 2014 to 2019. So we can verify both presidents oversaw the grant money that in part funded coronavirus research in a Wuhan lab. With your Verify, I'm Marcelino Benito. Well, hashtag most clicked here. The story is piquing everyone's interest right now. The race for Maricopa County's sheriff is still deadlocked in the Republican primary. The county recorder's office says all votes are in, but only a little more than 500 votes separate Jerry Sheridan's lead over former sheriff Joe Arpaio. But election officials are not calling the race just yet. This has all the makings for a recount. Chandler police arrested a man after they say DNA connected him to a nearly 30 year old sexual assault case. The DNA from 1991 was identified nine years after the fact, but it wasn't until recently that police got a sample of Gary Young's DNA and found a match. Young is charged with kidnapping a woman at gunpoint and sexually assaulting her at an apartment complex. 
Well, hot, dry, and an abundance of sunshine. Yep, that's what we are looking at right now across the state with a little breeze right there. So far, our non-soon is creating a lot of fire danger. Let's check in with meteorologist Crystal Henderson for your forecast 411. Right now, it's so important to be wildfire savvy as the scope of this red flag warning has been extended across northern Arizona today for strong southwest winds and extra dry air on deck. We really need to be walking on eggshells because the wildfire season so far this year has already outpaced the last eight years in terms of acreages burned at more than half a million acres blackened. It's so sad and our monsoon isn't helping at all. We're collecting more dust than rain in the rain gauge. Flagstaff now ranks to today's date 11th driest. To date in Phoenix with only a tenth of an inch, we rank third driest on record and for Tucson, fourth driest through today's date. Our lightning count is also way, way down with a statewide total of just 36,000. That's a record lowest. Only 300 of those strikes landed in the valley. Don't expect much action here on the monsoon meter for today. Just a two and a three apiece for the far eastern reaches of these zones here of the White Mountains in southeastern Arizona. We're looking at very low grade monsoon activity for the stretch of the next few days into the weekend. We're going to be hitting right around 110 in the valley near 105 in southern Arizona with winds whipping in northern Arizona and a big heads up for Sunday and Monday an excessive heat watch is going to be taking hold in the valley and near Globe and San Carlos. Mm, yet again. Oh, all right, Crystal. Boy, do we need that rain. Well, that is your 12 at 12. The facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes. No commercials. We're always on.